Hey everyone, it's Tyler Shrug from Universal Rackets and this is going to be an amazing video because in this video we're going to be teaching you how to play amazing defense in pickleball. Once again, if you stay tuned for this whole video, you are going to learn tons of tips and tons of tricks to play amazing defense. Behind at the baseline we're going to start and then we're going to teach you how to play defense up at the kitchen. If you hit a bad drop, if someone smashes the ball at you, this is going to be the video for you. Defense can turn into offense. If you're able to improve your defensive skills, you're going to completely transform your game and you're going to win many more points. Everyone has that offensive smash shots, but what separates the good from the bad players is the defense. So let's get started. So the number one thing that you have to understand in pickleball to play better defense is to accept that you are going to have to play defense. Once again, if you want to play better defense, the first thing I want to tell you is you need to accept that you are going to be playing defense in pickleball. Regardless of your level, if you're Ben Johns, if you're Annalie Waters, or if you're a random person, you are going to pop a drop up. But the thing is, what separates, again, the good from the bad players or the bad from the good, the bad, they pop the drop up and then they panic. Oh no, I don't want to pop a drop up. And then they smash it down and they try to do something. The good players, if they pop the drop up, they're calm, they're cool, they're collected. They know that they are going to get another chance. So tip number one, when you're back at the baseline and you pop up your drop and you give your opponent an offensive shot, I want you to stay calm. I want you to stay cool. I want you to realize that that is part of the pickleball process. Watch any type of pro pickleball event, and I want you to see how many drops people pop up. And what are they going to do? They're still going to win the point. They're perfectly fine because all they're going to do is stay back and get to the another ball. I want you to keep it simple for proper defense in terms. If you hit a good shot, move up. If you hit a bad shot, stay back. Once again, if you hit a good shot, move up. If you hit a bad shot, stay back. Now, what do I mean by a bad shot? I mean a shot that I accidentally pop the ball up a little bit high, where my opponent, again, at the kitchen is going to smash the ball down. So if I ever hit a bad shot in pickleball, all I'm going to do is just stay set and put my paddle down and try to go again players, they call it the third shot drop. I don't like to say the third shot drop every single time. I like to say the drop because it doesn't have to be the third shot. Until you get a good shot, then you're going to move up. So how do we play defense? Back at the baseline, you pop a drop up. All you're going to do is get ready, get set, and then try to go for another drop again. I'm going to keep on trying to get that ball into the kitchen. Maybe I pop it up 15 times and then the 17th time I finally move up. That is amazing defense rather than, oh, pop it up and then you panic. Now, the second thing to do with really good defense, okay, is again, number one is to accept that you're going to play defense. Number two, and like I just said, it could be the 15th, 17th, 19th, is to understand the always the next ball mentality. I want you to think if you ever give your opponent an opportunity, you need to have that mindset that you are going to just get another ball back. Once again, if you ever pop the ball up and give your opponent an offensive shot, the blueprint to the perfect defensive mindset is to always get the next ball back under any circumstance, okay? So you need to think again, you can go to the 153rd drop if you need to. So that's what you're going to do. Now, the next thing that you're going to do, and this is going to be huge for amazing defense, is you need to get into your legs and use your legs for power. Use your legs to get the ball back into court. When players are hitting offensive shots, especially up at the kitchen, and you're back at the baseline, or you're even in the transition zone resetting, where a lot of players go wrong for defense is maybe they have the right mentality, which we went over, but they're standing fully straight up and they're using their arm. They're trying to swing, they're using their wrist, they're trying to get the ball back. If someone ever smashes the ball at you, I need you to think, move back, set, 
paddle down. Notice when I set and what setting means is I'm literally squatting down and getting into my legs. If you came up and you pushed me right now, not a super hard push, but just like a little, a little movement, I'm not going anywhere. Why? Because I have a wide base, my weights and my heels, and I'm six feet tall and now I'm five feet. A lot of players, when they try to hit a defensive ball, they're standing straight up like a tin soldier. They're not getting down. And if you came in and tried to move me now, I'd fall right over. So I want you to think any time that you hit a defensive shot, I want you to get your legs down and your body down. The next thing that you're going to do is not only legs and body down, but you are going to get your paddle tip down. I want you to think if ever the ball goes up to your opponent, when the ball goes up, your paddle goes down. Uh, inversely, when their paddle goes down, your paddle goes up. So if the ball ever goes up super high, all I want you to do is just point your paddle tip down and then try to do it again. So again, I'm going to pop up. I'm gonna work on my tips. Okay, here we are, pop up. Okay, set, paddle tip down. Set, paddle tip down. Now, the next recipe to an amazing defensive shot is we're not using your arm and your wrist. We're setting on our body. We're pointing our paddle tip down, but now we're thinking about blocking. Once again, if you want to play perfect defense, you need to think that you're blocking and not swinging. Once again, you need to think that you're blocking, you're deflecting instead of swinging and hitting the ball. Too many players where they go wrong is their opponent will have a smash, and this is me too because I come from a tennis background, and they go fight or flight mode. We need to go over that mindset. That's why I spent so much time in the beginning of this video, right? So what I, what I mean is someone hits, you pop up your drop, someone hits a smash, and you're here, boom, you're trying to hit it back. Okay, that ball was in, but that was a self-feed, right? Instead of trying to go fight or flight, all I need you to do is get your body down like we just said and try to block the ball back. Again, this is going to be your swing. The harder your opponent hits at you, the shorter you want your swing. Because think, the ball is going to be coming super fast at you. All you have to do is just block the ball back instead of swinging at the ball. So if your opponent ever tees off at you, get your body down, get your legs down, and just take a little swing and think that you're blocking and deflecting, not swinging. Always have that next ball mentality and you're gonna be so much better when you're on court. Now, the next thing that I need you to do is I need you to set when your opponent hits, okay? I already said set, but when your opponent makes contact with the ball. This will help you with good defense, and then also this will help you go from defense to offense back at the baseline. And what I mean by that is a player will pop the ball up in there. They will pop the ball up in the air, and then they will run in. When you're moving, you can't set and you can't deflect and reset the ball and get it into the kitchen. So if you hit a high shot and your opponent makes contact with the ball, you need to stop your body. And then this is when we go in the tips. Again, we're setting, we're dropping our center of gravity and we're getting our paddle tip down. Now, if I know that the ball is super high and my opponent has an amazing smash, they tell me that they have that powerful shot, then I am going to stay back. However, if I see my opponent not demonstrate that they have a super powerful put away shot, a lot of players, they might get tentative, they might not have power, they might struggle, with putting the ball away. So maybe they get a high ball, but they can only do that, or maybe a little bit more. If I know that my opponent doesn't have an amazing smash, instead of staying back, like I said, I'm going to sneak up a tiny bit, and then I'm going to set. Again, if my opponent is tight, if I know that they're not going to absolutely put away their offensive ball, Instead of staying back like we did before, now we are going to sneak up a little bit. And where are we getting to? We are getting to the transition zone. And guys, this is where the top pickleball players make all their money. This is where the top pickleball players separate themselves from every other pickleball player in the world is because they are able to sneak in from going from defense to offense. So they know if they have a good opportunity, what are they going to do? They're going to sneak in, or if they know their, their opponent's not going to hit the ball super hard, and then they're going to stay here. Again, what do you do? When your opponent makes contact, you need to set and stop your body. 
So again, you know that your opponent's gonna hit a weak smash even if you pop up your offensive ball. Now you're going to sneak in a little bit, but you have to make sure you set. You have to make sure you stop your body and you put your paddle down. Now, Tyler, why am I supposed to put my paddle down when I am up at the transition zone? I want you to think you always wanna put your paddle down and set up here to play good defense because I want you to think what, if they ever go at your shoulders, at even at your chest or at your head, where is that ball going to go? It's going to go to the fence every single time. So think, if you set and put your paddle down like this, any ball that comes above your chest, let it go. The only ball that's going to go in that's above your chest or above your shoulders is a ball that's going zero miles per hour. And then what are you gonna do? Instead of resetting, then you're gonna see it and you're gonna have time to smash it. So we went over again, going from the baseline. We went over starting at the baseline, having the proper mentality. Then we went over the basic trying to always get the ball back, staying back until you get a good drop. Now we went over the technique, then we went over understanding our opponent's tendencies and trying to sneak up into the court. Now we're going to talk about playing defense at the kitchen. Now this is very different. Before we talked about from going back to forward. Now we are going to talk about going forward to back. Now they like to say you never want to move back from the kitchen. You never want to move back from the kitchen. You want to stay at the kitchen. Yes, yes, yes. However, if your opponent is going to absolutely annihilate the ball at you, you have permission to move back from the kitchen. So what we're going to do is if we're going to play good defense up the kitchen, all we're going to do is take a couple steps back and set again. Again, if you wanna play good defense at the kitchen, you're going to do the exact same pattern, the move back, you're going to set, and then you're going to get your paddle down when you're up at the kitchen as well. And again, you're going to think about what? Always getting the ball back, always keeping the paddle out in front, always taking a small swing. Moving back is going to allow you to have a little bit of time. You're going to put your paddle down and all you're going to try to do is block the ball back. Now guys, this is easier said than done. I understand no one wants to get the ball absolutely drilled at them. Well, if the ball ever comes at your face or near the beautiful money maker, what are you gonna do? You're gonna move out away. Again, that's easier said than done. However though, by being here and moving back a little bit and getting my paddle down, Again, if my opponent goes at my shoulders or my head, the ball's going long, now I'm going to try to just block the ball back, block the ball back, block the ball back, and then get into the court. Again, notice when I'm playing really good defense, if you're beaming balls at me, this is what I'm doing, okay? This is what I'm doing. Notice there is no swing. Again, it's not a swing, it's not a hit, it is a block. Now, what are you going to do? You pop the ball up, your opponent pops the ball up in there, then you're gonna move back, you're gonna set, you're gonna block the ball back, and then what are you going to do? Then you're going to finally move into the kitchen once you get a good shot. You are not going to move up again until what? Until you know that you hit a good ball into the kitchen. And that's the next tip that we're going to go on over. Not only recognizing our opponent's tendencies, but recognizing when we hit a good shot. Recognizing when it is time to move up and be aggressive. I want you to think if you ever can get your opponent with their paddle down or bending down at their waist instead of at their legs, that is going to be a good shot to move up. And the best defenders, they're not only good at defense because they went over all these tactics that we spoke about before, but they understand when they're out of defense into that offense position. Have you ever been at the kitchen, everyone? You're up at the kitchen, you think you're in the offensive spot, and then all of a sudden your opponents just somehow get the ball back and come up to the kitchen real easy. And you're like, wait, I was up at the kitchen, how did I do it? It's because they realized what, where they were on court, what was happening, and they were able to, boom, transform it into offense. I want you to think you're a magician. You know exactly when the audience is understanding your magic trick that you can pull the bunny out of the hat. You are going to what? You're going to see, you're going to recognize, okay, boom, now it's time to move up and get into the proper position. Now, how do you know when 
to transform defense to offense. Number one, what are you going to do? You're going to see your opponents, again, bend at the waist instead of the hips. Number two, you can see your opponents put their head down. And number three, you can see your opponents put their paddle down. Any time that your opponent is forced to hit a ball from low to high instead of high to low, that means that they're going to pop the ball up in the air. Because the only way to get a ball over a net that's super low is to pop it up over the net. Does that make sense? The only way to get this ball over the net is to what? Pop the ball up over the net. I have to hit from low to high to lift the ball into the air. The only time that uh, your opponent can hit an offensive shot at you is when they're going high to low. If your opponent is going high to low, then that's going to be an offensive shot. However, if your opponent's going low to high, then that is going to be a defensive shot. So what you need to do is whenever you see your opponent have to hit up instead of hit down, then you're going to move into the court and you're going to win many more points. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you can follow all these tips, all these tricks, have that mindset, use this technique, block the ball back, deflect the ball back, don't try to swing, stay calm, stay patient, stay cool and collected, and pull the bunny out of the hat when it's time to go from defense to offense, it's going to make you such a better defensive player. You're going to win so many more points and your opponents are going to get frustrated because when they see you block balls back, when they see you transform from offense to defense, or sorry, from defense to offense, they're going to start tightening up. They're going to start knowing, okay, when I'm up at the kitchen in an offensive position, it's not going to last for long. It is the most demoralizing thing as a pickleball player. When you're playing a team, when you're up at offense, and you see them just come up easily every single time and just win a point, right? They go from defense to offense. You're on offense, and then all of a sudden, they get up to the kitchen, they blast the ball by, and you're like, how did that happen? It's demoralizing. It gets into your opponent's head. It starts taking the paddle out of their hands, literally and figuratively. They're going to start thinking that they have to put the balls away faster. They're going to start being more aggressive. Then they're going to self-destruct. It's going to be a snowball effect, and you are going to win more points. If you can show your opponent that you're going to get more balls back by them, if you can show your opponent by using these techniques that you are going to just get another ball back, you're going to be super patient until you get up to the kitchen, that you're going to take the opportunity away from them and create your own opportunity yourself. Guys, you are going to be golden, and again, you're going to instantly improve your pickleball game. Now, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know, okay? Make sure to subscribe. If you want any type of pickleball program in your area, make sure to fill out the link in the Google form and a Universal Rackets representative will get out to you. Have a good one, happy hitting, and we will see you guys next time on court.